Hi there, in this video we're going to be looking at what happens at the plate margins. In order to revise these plate margins successfully you need to make sure you know what each boundary is, what happens at the boundary type, the key terms and key processes that take place at each boundary. Watch the video once through and then when we get to the end we will look at filling in a table like this from memory. But if this is just your first time watching, watch all the way through and I will explain at the end what you should do to help yourself revise these. The first plate margin we are going to focus on is a constructive plate margin. At this type of plate margin, two plates are moving apart or diverging from each other in opposite directions. Convection currents moving in opposite directions in the mantle move these two plates apart. And this diagram will be showing the Eurasian plate and the North American plate moving apart from each other. And the blue area above the two plates is the ocean. So as the plates move apart, this leaves little cracks and fissures, lines of weakness in the crust, which allows magma from the mantle to escape through. The mantle is highly pressurised, so magma quickly fills the gap and eventually it will erupt onto the surface and cool as new land which is why that you can see it is poking out of the ocean. Both earthquakes and volcanoes occur at constructive plate margins. The earthquakes are caused by the movement of the magma through the crust, and volcanoes are formed at the constructive plate boundary because of that magma escaping through the crust. At this margin, we get shield volcanoes. The magma at a constructive plate margin is very hot and very fluid, which means that it's gonna flow a very long way out of that crust before cooling down. So this results in very low and flat volcanoes. A good example of a constructive plate margin is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where the Eurasian plate moves away from the North American plate at a rate of about four centimetres per year. And the island Iceland exists because of this margin. So to summarise, constructive plate boundaries are plates moving apart, magma escapes which forms new land, and shield volcanoes, and we also have earthquakes at this plate margin. The next plate margin is a conservative plate margin. At a conservative margin, two plates are either sliding past each other in the same direction at two different speeds, or two plates are sliding past each other in different directions. As they move past each other, stress energy builds up as the plates snag and grind one another. The energy eventually is released and this sends shock waves through the Earth's crust and we know these shock waves as earthquakes. There are no mountains or volcanoes at conservative plate boundaries because there is no magma escaping and creating new land. A really good example is the San Andreas Fault in California, USA, where the Pacific Plate is moving northwest at a faster rate than the North American Plate. You may have seen the film San Andreas, it might be quite a good way to remember this plate margin, however it is horrendously inaccurate in terms of the geography. To summarise, conservative margins are when plates slide past each other or go in the same direction but at different speeds. We get earthquakes due to the friction, build up and release of energy and there are no volcanoes or new land created because there is no magma released. We are now going to look at what happens when two plates move towards each other. Destructive plate margins are when two plates move or converge together and we have the destruction of Earth's crust as a result. This usually involves an oceanic plate and a continental plate. As we saw in the previous video, the oceanic crust is denser and continental crust is less dense. Therefore, when they meet, the oceanic plate is pushed down, or a better key term is subducted, under the continental plate at what is called a subduction zone. This normally causes a deep trench where those two plates meet. Due to the plate movement, friction and energy being built up, Earthquakes occur at the destructive plate margin when the plates eventually slip past each other, which releases the seismic energy. As the oceanic crust sinks, friction, increasing pressure and heat from the mantle melts and destroys the oceanic plate. 
This creates magma that is less fluid than that of the magma in the mantle. The pressure of the magma builds up underneath the Earth's surface. Some of the magma, or the molten rock, can work its way up through the continental crust through fissures and cracks in the crust, and we get magma chambers, which are pockets of magma in the continental crust. When it escapes through these weaknesses, it rises up through something we call a composite volcano. Composite volcanoes are different to shield volcanoes because they are steep-sided as the lava doesn't flow very far before it solidifies. The volcanic eruptions are often very violent with lots of steam, gas and ash. The hot gas and volcanic matter that erupts out of the composite volcano is called pyroclastic flow and it reaches speeds of up to 700 kilometers per hour. This is often the main cause of death when there is a volcanic eruption. There are, several, there are several great examples of destructive plate margins, including along the west coast of the Americas and Japan, where the Philippines sea plate is pushed under the Eurasian plate. And there is one in this diagram, which is the Nazca plate subducting under the South American plate. So to recap, at a destructive plate margin, this is where an oceanic plate subducts or sinks underneath a continental plate. At a destructive plate boundary, we get composite volcanoes and we get earthquakes. And finally, a collision boundary is what happens if two continental plates collide. Neither can sink as they are the same density, so the two plates crumple into one another and fold upwards to form fold mountains. Earthquakes are very common at collision margins and there are no volcanoes because there is no magma erupting. A great example which links to our next case study are the Himalayan mountains. This is where the Indo-Australian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate. The Himalayan mountains are thought to be growing about 6.1 centimetres a year. So to summarise, it's quite a straightforward one. Two plates of similar density collide upwards creating fold mountains. There are earthquakes, but there are no volcanoes. So now you've watched the video, try to complete this table yourself and see what information you have retained. Once you've done this, watch over the video again and complete the table with any information that you couldn't recall or that is missing. Remember you need to include a clearly labelled diagram. You need a description of the main features, so these are your key points about the margin. You need to explain the process that is occurring, so that should say explain not describe. So explain what happens using this is because and this means that and include your key terms. I would suggest highlight those key terms and highlight where you are using this is because and this means that. And finally, make sure you've given key examples of named places and named margins for each of those plate margins.